APCO Educational Topic 24, Preterm Labor. Preterm birth is defined as delivery between 20 and 37 weeks estimated gestational age. In the U.S., it accounted for 35% of all mortality in the first year of life and 70% of all neonatal mortality defined as death in the first 28 days of life. Respiratory distress, infection, and intraventricular hemorrhage are the leading causes of morbidity and mortality for preterm infants. The preterm birth rate was 10.6% in 1990 and increased 20% to 12.8% in 2006. The rate has slightly decreased in recent years and was 11.4% in 2013. This graph shows the marked racial and ethnic variations in preterm birth rates in the United States. Non-Hispanic black women and American Indian women have the highest preterm birth rates at 16.3 and 13% respectively. The preterm birth rates in the United States are approximately double the rates in European countries. The objectives of this video are to identify risk factors, signs and symptoms of preterm labor, describe the initial management for preterm labor including medication indications and contraindications, list the adverse outcomes associated with preterm birth, and lastly describe counseling to reduce the risk of preterm birth in the future. Let's begin by discussing risk factors for preterm birth. One of the strongest clinical risk factors is a history of a preterm birth. This confers a 1.5 to 2 fold increased risk in subsequent pregnancies. A short cervical length defined as less than 25 millimeters before 24 weeks gestation has also been associated with an increased risk of preterm birth. A history of cervical surgery, including conization and loop electrode excision procedures, have been thought to be risk factors, although multiple confounders such as smoking complicate this relationship. Vaginal bleeding, urinary tract infections, genital tract infections, and periodontal diseases have also been associated with an increased risk of preterm birth. Behavioral risk factors such as smoking, substance abuse, and low maternal BMI less than 19.8 and short interpregnancy intervals are the final risk factors. Preterm labor is characterized by uterine contractions and cervical dilation and or effacement. The management for preterm labor differs by gestational age. Between 24 and 34 weeks, the most important intervention is administration of corticosteroids. This reduces rates of respiratory distress syndrome, intracranial hemorrhage, necrotizing enterocolitis, and death. Tocolytic therapy is used only for short-term prolongation of pregnancy, for enabling the administration of corticosteroids as well as transport if needed to a tertiary care facility. Magnesium sulfate is now widely used if delivery is believed to be imminent before 32 weeks for evidence suggests that this reduces the severity and risk of cerebral palsy in surviving infants. There are four classes of commonly used tocolytic agents. Calcium channel blockers such as mifedipine are the first class, and these cannot be used if there is maternal hypotension or preload-dependent cardiac lesions such as aortic insufficiency. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs cannot be used if there is platelet dysfunction or bleeding disorders, hepatic dysfunction, GI ulcerative disease, renal dysfunction, and asthma for women who are hypersensitive to aspirin. Beta-adrenergic receptor agonists such as terbutaline cannot be used with tachycardia-sensitive cardiac disease and poorly controlled diabetes mellitus. Magnesium sulfate is the fourth class of tocolytic, and this medication cannot be used if the patient has myasthenia gravis. Remember that these tocolytics are only used for short-term prolongation of pregnancy. There is no benefit of tocolytic therapy for longer-term prolongation of pregnancy. For many years, we did not have any interventions that could prevent preterm birth. However, we now know that progesterone therapy can reduce the risk. Progesterone causes inhibition of cervical ripening, reduction of myometrial contractility, and is a modulator of inflammation. Women who have had a history of a preterm birth or who have a short cervix should receive progesterone therapy. We can now counsel women who have had a preterm birth that progesterone therapy is an intervention that we can offer to try to decrease the risk of future preterm delivery. This concludes the APCO video on preterm labor. We have discussed the adverse outcomes, risk factors, signs, symptoms, management, and strategies for reducing preterm birth.